Oh, hello everybody. My name is William Nathans and I'm a tutor with the Dublin and Dunleary Education Training Board. And I'm here today to do a video with you on drawing, drawing a portrait. So for my materials, all I have is a pencil, a sheet of paper, and an eraser. And that's all you need for this, um, for this lesson. So to begin, when drawing a portrait, just start off by marking the middle of your page. Put a dot right in the middle of your page. And a good place to set your head is where the chin is on the middle of the page. It's a good position for the head on the page. So just start off with a simple sort of egg shape. If you notice, I'm using, I'm holding the pencil back like this as opposed to like this. It keeps me from wanting to rush to the details too early. So just starting off with a sort of an egg shape. You can see that. And then I'm going to mark down the center of the head. But instead of putting the line right down the middle, I'm going to put my center, center line over to the side like this. And that tells me the position of the head that I'd like the portrait to be. Now remember your tear ducts, your lower eyelid is the center of the whole face. So if I find the middle of this, I'm just going to put a line across. And that represents the bottom of the eyes right there, the lower eyelids. Now from that point to the base of the, of the egg, half of that is roughly the nose. And then from that point to the chin, half of that is roughly the mouth. So that's essentially the, the head right there. Now from this lower eyelid line, I'm just going to go up a bit and that's going to give me the mark of the, the brows. And then just here is what's called the temple, the temple ridge. You can feel it on your own head. It's a slight depression just above the eyebrow, above the cheekbone. And by putting in that mark, it gives me a corner. It's going to help make your, your head look a bit more three-dimensional. Now, if this is the brow line, and that's the bottom of the nose, roughly in between that is place the ear. So the ear is roughly in between the brow and the bottom of the nose. Okay, and once you've placed your ear, back behind the ear is the large muscle that represents the neck. It's just a large muscle that's called the sternomastoid muscle, but not to worry about the name of it. It's just begins right behind your ear lobe. So once we have the ear placed, we can just draw this line and that represents the placement of the neck. And then just coming down underneath the nose is the other side of the neck. And that's roughly the schematic for the head. Now, to begin, what I suggest is to draw what's called the silhouette. The silhouette is just all of the shadow shapes on the head. So at this stage, I'm not interested in the light shapes. I'm only interested in the shadow shapes created from the light. So if the light is coming from this direction and it's cascading over this person's head, it's going to create shadow shapes. Shadow shapes created by the features of the face and it's those shadow shapes that I'm interested in drawing and I a tip if you only draw those shadow shapes you will improve your likenesses so to demonstrate what I mean by that I'm just going to show you again you're holding my pencil back here I'm just going to draw the shadow shapes so there's a shadow under his nose the nostril There's a shadow on the whole side of his, of his face. There's a shadow on the inside of the brow here against the nose. The whole brow is casting a shadow.
the lower eyelid is casting a shadow. We'll give this man a beard. So there's a shadow underneath the beard. And on the lower lip. There's a shadow underneath the ear and underneath the chin onto the neck. If you notice, as I'm doing this, I'm keeping my shadow value all the same, all the same tone. I'm not varying it. I'm just keeping it all the same tone. And by doing that, it helps improve the consistency of your portrait. So and when you're beginning, try not to add too many tones. Just try to keep it the same tone and you'll get a much more um, clearer portrait. Okay, the forehead, there's a bit of shadow. Now when placing the eyes, just make sure if this is the bottom eye on this side, just to run it across. From side to side this way everything will line up also the tear ducts themselves should line up on either side of the nostril just like so so the upper eyelid is casting a shadow just put a note in for the eye itself again i'm just trying to stick with the same tone the same tone is what's going to give me the consistency for your portrait. And using your eraser, just bring back all the lights right back to the white of the page. So at this stage, you can begin to just tidy up the lights of the drawing and remove some of these some of these um, some of these lines that we use to mark out the initial stages of the, of the portrait. Okay, so that's one eye there. I'm going to bring it over to this side. See how I'm just carrying that over? So I start with the eye by drawing the iris which is the colored part of the eye. Just draw the whole colored part of the eye as one shape. So most of this eye is in shadow, so I'm just gonna make it all the same. See, I'm still trying to keep the same tone for all of my shadows. <clears throat> Underneath the lower eyelid, there's a bit of shade. A bit of shade on the lower eyelid here. Around the nostril. Underneath the lower lip. Hopefully you can start to see the likeness emerge in this portrait. You can create any portrait just using this technique, just focusing on the on the shadow tones. Okay, now we'll give him some tone, some hair. I'm just gonna lay this in here. Finish this beard here. This is just the outer contour of the beard. And remember, I'm not even drawing the hair of the beard; only the shadow. Only the shadows. So don't even worry about lines for hair for the beard. 
It's just what, what are the shadows of the beard? That's more important. And again, you can erase as you work, erase away the, the initial lines just so that you have it all clean. And this is what's called the silhouette. You see, the silhouette is just the black and white pattern that you would see if, say, for instance, a photograph was overexposed. You just have white and black. Okay. Now for the rest of the hair here. Remember, it's always good to draw the whole top of the head first before drawing the hair because the hair sits on top of the skull. So if you draw, because sometimes if you just draw hair, it doesn't look like there's enough skull for the head. So to always draw the full skull, the roundness of, of the head first, and then on top, draw your hair and it'll just appear much better. Okay. So this is all in shadow of his hair. And on the edges of your shadow, just try to tidy them up. Try to have a nice clean, nice clean edge. Sort of the, the parting of the hair on his forehead. So this is still just the shadow there. And then again, tidy up the, the lines. And also the shadows on the ear. So within the ear itself, you have the little parts of the ear. The outer edge of the ear is just called the helix. So there's a shadow that the helix casts. It's that little ridge on the end. And I'm just going to draw that in. And then this is just the upper portion of the what's called the concha. And then just by the lobe, there's a bit of shade. So again, I'm only still drawing the shadows that are in the ear, the base of the uh, concha there. Okay, and there's a bit of shade there and just here. Just tightening up as you go. That's it. So once you, you have the bones of your portrait complete, I'll just finish with the eyebrow here. Then and only then would I proceed with with the details. All the shadows are the same consistent value, consistent tone. And that's how you're going to improve your likenesses by really just focusing on what's called the silhouette. So that's an example of the silhouette. Once the silhouette is done, and just to say too that the silhouette is probably, because it's just shadow and light, a shadow pattern, at the end of the day, this shadow pattern is almost an interesting abstract shape in and of itself. So if we don't associate it with a portrait, we're just looking at the actual shape and abstract it. 
it can help you to d decipher what that shape is. So just studying the shape, it might look like something other than an eye. It might look like um, almost like a sort of a, if I just look at, isolate this shape, it kind of looks like some sort of, I don't know, a snail or, or, you know, anything from your imagination. And that can really help you draw the shape better. As opposed to always saying to yourself, I'm drawing an eye, I'm drawing an eye. Well, you are drawing an eye, but you're also drawing a shadow shape. And that shadow shape has a particular, has particular features about it. And if we just think of it as a, a shape and not as an eye, you'll actually draw a better eye or a better nose or whatever it is that you're drawing. See this shape, for instance, if I just look at the shadow shape like this, it looks like a little sort of lizard. There's the head of the lizard, there's the tail, you know, and then compare your shadow shape to the shape that you're drawing and you'll really improve your drawing. Okay. So once the, once all this pattern is done, you'll have a likeness. And even if you step away from your drawing and look at this from a distance, you'll see the likeness immediately. You'll just see it. Okay. Now to take it further, what we can do now is if this is our, the value we were using, something like this, if that was the tone we used, we now can go even darker. This as compared to that. And we can use that for drawing within the shadows. So for instance, if I just darken the eyebrows here. Uh, I'll darken around his mouth. I'll put the pupils in for the eyes. And I'll just darken the upper eyelid. Just strengthen the overall eye shape of it. And also these folds that are within the eye, I'm just going to darken as well. So that initial tone that we started with, once we push darker for some of these details inside, it doesn't look as dark anymore. It almost has a, has a lightness about it. And that's what we're going to use in order to draw the details of, of the portrait. You see, by starting off consistently, it's going to help us create the effect of light on this, on this head. So I'm just going to draw in now the actual nostril itself within that shadow pattern. And I'm just going to put some lines in for the hair. Now you can use any, any head uh, from a magazine or a newspaper or um, um, any section of the newspaper, the news section, the business, the sports section, you'll find loads of portraits and you can just use that to, um, as, a, as examples to draw. And to help you find this pattern, if you took a photograph of it on your phone, and then edit in the edit section of your phone, just increase the contrast, adjust the contrast. So it's purely black and white. And you'll see what I mean uh, as an example of looking at just the silhouette to draw. And if you just drew the silhouette, you will incredibly improve your likenesses in your portraits. So strengthen this contour now. And just practice that. You could practice heads um, taken from anywhere and just draw, just draw the silhouette. And eventually you'll be training your eye to see the silhouette. You're seeing the, the overall light and overall dark. Now I know in the lights, there's details of, 
you know, tones, say in the forehead, the flesh, you know, the tones in his nose, in the cheeks. That's it's very true. There's all sorts of tones, but all of these tones are not nearly as dark as the shadow pattern. So the whole idea is to really train yourself to only see the shadow, because if you can just see the shadow as compared to the light, you see in this light, there's all sorts of tones, but as varied as they are, they're still just light tones. This is a darker light. This is a brighter light. This is a dimmer light along the temple. And then it goes underneath the cheek, the tones of the cheek and under the eye. But as varied as they are, they're still just all differentiated light tones. I can pull out now the highlight on the nose and then on the nasal bone. But as varied as they are, they're not shadow. They're just various light tones. So it's training ourselves to see the true shadow tone. So this, all of this would be the true shadow tone. Even the, the tone of the beard. We'll give this man kind of a dark beard. But again, that darkness of the beard is not the shadow pattern. See, we're still trying to keep the shadow pattern distinct as it is from, as from the light. And even if you think you've lost it, like in this case here, always just strengthen the shadow pattern. See, by strengthening that value now, the shadow pattern, I'll get the separation between the light and the dark of it, the hair on his chin compared to the neck. So it's try to keep your tones clean and separate, that there's a distinction between them. between dark and light. So being clean and consistent with your drawing is also very essential when drawing a portrait. Um, it's going to help improve because it's these tones that have to be very clearly um, placed, which is going to create the illusion of three dimensional form on your on your work on your painting or your drawing. And you could spend drawing after drawing just improving on the silhouette. Okay, and that's called drawing the silhouette of a portrait. You can do the same with a piece of fruit or a still life. Just look at the light and the dark and you'll get a better likeness and a better um, impression of the thing that you're drawing. Okay, thank you very much for your time, everybody. And just remember to stay safe, to clean your hands all the time, and to keep your social distance and to really be safe. So um, take care, everybody. Thanks again. Bye bye.